Steve, what's happening with Kwai Show? Yeah, you know, it's been a roller coaster 10 months, hasn't it? Uh, and of course, this story is multifold. Uh, with Kwai Show, as you mentioned, that uh, six month uh, post IPO lockup period uh, expired, and uh, many people dumped out of this stock. Uh, the most on record falling yesterday, about 15, more than 15%. The stock is now down more than 20% since its IPO price six months ago. It once was an IPO darling, of course, but times have changed, obviously, uh, in these last six months, and now focus is kind of turning. So, while we had that, uh, you know, the cornerstone investors and key investors getting out, uh, we also have, you know, investors kind of not only parsing Xi Jinping's speeches, but also state media more than ever before. Because with all the noise earlier this week, with Xinhua having that story about the dangers of online gaming and Tencent falling, Tencent, by the way, fell again yesterday as well, down more than 11% in the past week. But there was another article that came out of Xinhua that talked about uh, the algorithm, algorithms that these media companies uh, like TikTok, uh, like Kwai Show, have been using uh, to drive consumer content and consumer loyalty, if you will, uh, to drive traffic, essentially. And I just want to cite this one thing. The Economic Daily on Thursday uh, put, out a put out a note that says companies uh, must reduce their reliance on vulgar videos to drive traffic. So, again, this, this sell-off in Kwai Show is dual fold. It is the lockup period expiring and then, of course, parsing state media. We're also hearing of layoffs at the uh, at, at ByteDance, of course, the question rival. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, that's the education crackdown. So we have to look at the number of different crackdowns because ByteDance wanted to kind of diversify, find its next star. So they went into educational technology companies like GoGo Kid, which, by the way, is going to be shutting down completely after this crackdown on the online tutoring sector. Uh, we're learning that ByteDance is going to be laying off hundreds of employees and closing down a number of these services. Uh, the educational tech sector from ByteDance, which is famous for TikTok, of course, at one time employed more than 10,000 employees. That is going to be shaved down. We also saw a selling on some of those so-called buy stocks. Is this just investors unloading on anything and everything that they perceive Beijing might not like? Confidence is kind of shaky, as one investor told us, and that's true across many different sectors. Uh, quickly, I'll just talk about the vaping stocks, the e-cigarette stocks. Uh, many of them fell uh, because, again, they're looking at Xinhua news reports. Uh, we're reading state media in China with more uh, veracity than ever before, perhaps, because uh, S'more International is one particular vaping stock that fell as much as 7.8 percent before correcting uh, a bit. Uh, there was a Xinhua report that said, uh, you know, talked about the ability of adolescents to be able to get e-cigarettes and other e-cigarette makers, like you see, Shenzhen, Jinjia, uh, also fell 4.8%. Uh, but also the alcohol front, Guizhou Maotai is the most famous alcohol company, of course, in China. It fell, along with other Baijiu makers. There was a government ministry that posted online a story linking alcohol with cancer. We've known about that link for years, if not decades. But anything that is being posted online in China by a ministry sparks some fear.